So hello everyone, uh, Microbe Hunter here again. Welcome to another Saturday microscopy live stream. Um, yeah, um, thank you for taking the time again. Uh, well, in today's uh, live stream, I'm going to talk about different topics. Uh, I would like uh, to put uh, some of those um, uh, um, uh, butterflies, uh, of course, uh, under the microscope. Um, and I would also like uh, to put some sand again under the microscope. However, the sand sample, which I have over here, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, contains a few interesting things that I would like uh, to check. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, um, it looks like gold, but I will tell you right now it is not. I'm going to show you how to distinguish gold um, from, uh, yeah, from the pyrite, which is in here. And last but not least, look what I got here. Um, I got, uh, yeah, a, a couple of plants here, and I would like to show you how to prepare um, some root tips um, for microscopy as well, and maybe a little bit of, of staining um, as well with uh, Löffel solution, with this, which is methylene blue. And uh, what I will be doing this uh, um, uh, in this live stream is the following. I will separate the topics a little bit. And uh, after each section, which is going to maybe last around 15 minutes, I'll do a Q&A session and then I'll move on to the next session. Um, you can also see right now that I'm not wearing my headset today. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm, I've got a microphone next to me and I hope uh, that uh, the sound works again. <laughs> so I'm a little bit paranoid because I'm kind of worried that uh, um, the sound uh, doesn't work because uh, some time ago I actually started to stream and nobody was able to hear me. So if, uh, if you're able to hear me right, maybe you can just uh, quickly write a comment in the comment section um, and uh, in the chat section. And um, for those of you who are new, um, what I will be doing is I'll be answering some questions that you pose um, in, in the chat. And uh, I would like to ask you please to always include uh, either at Oliver or at Microbe Hunter so that it's easier for me to actually find uh, the questions which are directed or the comments which are directed um, to me. Okay, the sound seems to be good. Yeah, so uh, great. Yeah, hello around the world. And what I will be do is doing is, is I'll be starting right away. Um, some background information first. Um, I've got here some prepared butterflies. I did not make them myself. Uh, those um, those butterflies here have been in the family now for, I don't know, <laughs> maybe 40 or even 50 years. Uh, they are quite old. Um, I don't even remember from where we've got those. We've got several more. You can see that the background paper already started to get a little bit dirty. Um, yeah, I know about the ethics of of, of, of animals and, and killing animals. Uh, yeah, but uh, I did not prepare those. I, we got those. Um, so I'll be putting those under the microscope. And what I would like to do specifically, I would like to show you how to do some image stacking as well. Okay, some depth of field, uh, some focus stacking that, that is. And I would like to do that um, and, and show it to you as well. And uh, those uh, here, I don't even remember. I think a, a, a student or something uh, must have given it to, to me once. Um, yeah, and uh, you see that there are some, even some, some uh, yeah, scientific names here. But I have to admit, I have my doubts whether they are actually correct. And those of you who know a little bit about biology, you already know that there um, is a mistake already here, because uh, the the species name over here should always be written in lowercase letters, and everything should be italicized. I know I'm getting very <laughs> specific here. Yeah, so I have some doubts whether these are actually the real, uh, the real, um, how do you say, the real names, right? Um, so, but. It doesn't matter. They will uh, look uh, great under the microscope um, in in any case. Okay, so um, yeah. So please do ask uh, questions. Uh, but um, at the end uh, um, of this mic uh, session here, after this topic here, I will be then going back to the questions and and uh, and, and uh, try to answer them. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to switch over now to my uh, stereo microscope. Okay, um, and uh, hope that this works. Okay, yes, here we go, here we go, okay. So um, what I'll be doing now is, is um, I'll be just looking at a few of those specimens here and then I'll be making a couple of pictures. The question is only where I'm gonna put those. Here. Okay, so I'll be looking at, at this one here right now, okay. Um, and the only issue is, of course, that um, I'm looking at this through glass, always focus, uh, yeah zoom out a little bit so this means we are able to see a little bit some of the dirt on, on the glass as well okay uh, the camera also kind of overexposes uh, this a little bit yeah yeah um, there is an automatic uh, yeah exposure setting and as you can see this is how it looks like right and uh, maybe if we go here a little bit where the wing is a little bit darker and what we can do is, is we can zoom in okay refocus and then we should be able to see the individual scales um, yeah of the butterfly yeah yeah so you can see that 
yeah, these are the scales. I have to tell you, the contrast is not the very best. And I think one of the reasons why this the, the image quality is not so good here is, is indeed because of the glass on the surface. And you see that there are these reflections here that um, make uh, the glass um, yeah, the, the, the that uh, really change the contrast around a little bit uh, in a, in such a way. So what you'd have to do is, is you'd have to probably take out the um, the butterfly, um, the other one over here um, as well. Let's zoom out again. Always start at a low magnification. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here we ah yeah here we are able to see the individual scales much better. Occasionally you are able to find butterfly or moth scales, uh, yeah, or other insect scales in dust. And uh, then sometimes people ask me, what are they, right? Yeah, but they have those characteristic patterns. Honestly, I'm really not happy with the the quality here. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, we're going to just try the other sample here because also the the glass is curved and this might also contribute a little bit to the reflections. So the other one over here, I'm going to change it now. Okay, so let's have a look here. Again, let's zoom out. Okay, I think this is a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, so this is how, how it looks like. Yeah. yeah. And when we zoom in, yeah, again, always refocus. And then we're also able to see the individual black scales that have come off here. Okay. So and what I'd like to do um, is I'd like to uh, to do a little bit of uh, some focus stacking here. Now you might say, is, what is there to stack? Because the wing actually is quite flat, right? Um, so you see how it always uh, uh, corrects. So but what I would like to do is I would like to specifically do a focus stack of the head of the of the butter butterfly. Um, of course, I could also do a focus stack of my fly that I have here. Okay, but uh, I've done this already so often. Uh, I've showed it to you already so often that I decided to <laughs> take the butterflies today. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do now, therefore, is I'm going to um, use again the other one over here, and I'm going to now switch over into the um, the program to take pictures. And I would like to first illustrate to you a little bit of what I'm going to do. Okay. So um, for the, specifically for those of you who are new to um, to focus stacking and stereo microscopy. First of all, there is a little bit of an issue here that I have because of the reflection of the light. So I'm going to try to change the lamp and have it. Yeah, I don't know if this is even better or not. Yeah. So not not so much better. But in any case, let me try the other one again. Okay. Um, in any case, especially the high magnification. Um, yeah, so the camera will adjust now. It is uh, not possible to have both uh, the top and the bottom part in focus. Yeah, so right now the antenna is in focus. I mean, the contrast is really low here, right? <laughs> And then when a focus, uh, yeah, then the lower part is in focus, but it's not possible to have both in focus. And when you do focus stacking, then um, yeah, um, the computer will combine the images uh, to get everything in focus. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, when I focus up and down, you're also going to see that there is a horizontal shift in the image. Right, and uh, this is uh, something that is normal when you do stereo microscopy, and the reason is is because the camera only uses one of the objectives, and the objective is is off axis. There are two objectives, one on the left and the right side, but the camera only uses one of them. Right, and as you focus up and down, um, yeah, because it's not uh, you know, centered the objective, right, the axis is a little bit to, to the side. For this reason, there is this horizontal shift, which is uh, normal, and the focus stacking software will compensate that. Okay, um, so this is a little bit the thing here, but I have to tell you, I'm not really happy with the the overall uh, um, yeah contrast. So normally, what you do is, is if you have low contrast like this, is is before processing the the images, um, you do some contrast enhancement in Photoshop or in GIMP or in some kind of image editing program, and yeah, it'll significantly improve the image quality. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that now, um, but rather I'd like to um, yeah uh, simply. Um, yeah, just give you a demonstration on on on, on focus stacking using yeah, the head of this butterfly here. Okay, again, let's do it like this. So, and in order to do that, what I'm going to I have to switch uh, have to switch uh, programs. Okay, um, so I'm going to switch over to the um, yeah to the program uh, called Tube View. 
So I'm going to do that now. Okay. And uh, uh, I would like to turn on the camera and hope that it's going to work. Yeah. So that's basically now the view um, of uh, of the um, yeah uh, to view view. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now adjust uh, the exposure and everything. So I'm going to not to auto exposure, but I'm going to lower the exposure time here a little bit. Yeah. So you see the contrast also goes up a little bit. It's much better this way. And I'm going to zoom in uh, to do yeah. And uh, as you see, the further I zoom in. The more I zoom in, the darker the image becomes. So I have to increase the exposure time again. Okay. Of course, I could also um, increase the gain, but this uh, might actually introduce um, yeah, some some noise. And because I'm taking still images anyway, the exposure time is is uh, not a not a problem, right? And now here we are able to see much better. Right now, the top part, uh, the antenna is in focus, uh, but the bottom part not so much. Yeah. And then as I focus down, where is this? Yeah, here. Yeah. And you see the, the bottom part is not so much in focus. And here, yeah, see the bottom part is now in focus and now the antenna. And I want to get an image which is basically, um, yeah, which is basically um, in focus all the way through. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be capturing capturing a series of, of images, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, if there is, by the way, uh, for your info, um, if the sound is a little, okay, um, a couple of weeks ago, what happened is, is that all of a sudden the live stream stopped, uh, the program got interrupted. If something like this unexpected, like this happens again, please, uh, yeah, um, I will have to start a new live stream, probably I'm um, using a different link. Okay. Just, uh, so that you, um, you're aware of this. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is what I'll be doing now. I'll be starting here um, at the top and I'll be focusing downwards and I will be taking pictures. Okay. Normally you'd be taking, um, I don't know, a lot of pictures, right? Um, I'll not take so many of those because I just want to illustrate the concept. Okay. So, and what I'll be doing first is, is I'll click over here in the corner. I'll click snap, click. And uh, this will now generate um, a new picture here. It's called at the top 0001 in the yellow tab, right? And uh, I have to click back again so that I'm able to see the camera again because otherwise I'm, yeah, I'm just going to be looking at the picture and this is not gonna change. So to click back to the camera, I'm going to focus down a little bit, okay? And I click snap again, okay? Now I've got the second picture. I have to click back to the camera. So it's the camera view again. I focus down again a little bit and I click another picture, okay? Back to the camera view, focus down, snap, okay? Back to the camera, focus down, snap. Back to the camera, focus down, snap. Back to the camera, focus down, snap. Back to the camera, focus down, snap, oh yeah. Now the bottom part is quite much in focus now. Yeah, and now it's going out of focus again, snap. So what I've taken now, I've taken nine pictures and I have to now save them uh, consecutively. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, this is basically uh, the camera view and uh, I always had to go back to the camera because when you look at the picture here and when I change the focus, I'm changing now the focus, you don't see it change because um, yeah, because it's actually the camera views a different view here, a different tab. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is the following. I go over here to um, file. Um, it says here batch save. I want to save all of them automatically. It will uh, save it here in F capture tube view and it will save it as a sequence as a JPEG. It starts with uh, one and I click OK and it will automatically number them and save all of the nine pictures automatically. See, and it saved all of them right now. Okay, so everything's now um, on my hard disk. Okay, and now I can continue with, uh, yeah, um, with, uh, I can now continue with uh, the next program. Okay, now uh, concerning focus stacking, there are different programs that you can use. There is a free program called Picolet. I'm going to type it now into the, the messages. Uh, it's, it's totally free, picolet.de. So it's uh, uh, that is the um, yeah I typed it now into the uh, into the um, into the chat okay and this is a free one um, or um, what I'm going to be using but the the, the disadvantage with Picolet is it's a very first of all it's a very powerful 
program, but it's not quite as user friendly. You really have to know a little bit the documentation. You have to read the documentation a little bit, but it's really powerful. Um, but for most cases, you just want to have a, a very quick, um, a very quick way of of, of actually uh, generating stacked images. And for that, I recommend Helicon Focus, which I'm going to now show you. It is a commercial program. Okay, it's called Helicon Focus. Let's click. Uh, yeah, uh, the, I'm going to go in here. Yeah, so let's click the help one over here. Yeah, so about. Yeah, so that's the, that's the name uh, of the program, heliconsoft.com. Yeah, and you can download it, and then you get for 30 days, you get a 30 day uh, trial version, um, and uh, then you're able to use it for 30 days, right? Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise you have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, but I'm going. I'm now in the trial um, of this, and the good thing about this program is it's it's extremely easy to use and very fast. Okay, and it produces uh, quite good results. So what I have to do first is I have to file open images. So I will do this first file, um, open images, and uh, here are the the images right that I've got right. So I will mark those. I open them, and here they are on the side right. You have you have them over here on the side. Okay, and uh, yeah, um, and what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to yeah. There's different ways. If you look here on the on the right side, method A, a weighted average depth map and pyramid, and you just uh, try these, and you will you click on render, and then you just uh, check uh, which one re produces the best results. Okay, and we're finished. So you see uh, on the right side, on the right image, you see um, this one over here is is uh, the stacked uh, picture. Right. Um, you can also try method B. Yeah. Click render. Yeah. It also produces uh, it's a little bit more grainy. And method C. Again, render. Uh, yeah. I, I think method A and for this uh, one seem to have worked the best. I don't. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to look uh, very carefully. And then uh, what you're able to do is, is you can click up here for retou retouching. Um, you can um, yeah do some some improvements here. Yeah. And then at the end you're able uh, to save it the image and uh, you're finished. Um, and uh, then you can continue to edit uh, the whole thing in, in Photoshop, for example, right? So uh, this is basically a very simple way of, of doing um, yeah, focus stacking. Um, and uh, now the question is, is what happens if you do not have a stereo microscope? Okay, so that's now the question. Can you do something similar also with uh, a compound microscope? And the answer is, is yes, you can do that. Uh, um, what you have to do in this case, and I also made videos of this, is if you use the four times low pow power objective, um, you are actually also able uh, to um, yeah, get images. I have now the problem that I'm not able to put, I don't know, I could try it. I don't know if this is actually if this works well, but what I could do is, is I could I don't know it's it's a little bit too thick this this year, but I could try to put it on. No, it's not gonna fit. I think I don't know. Okay, no, I, it's, it doesn't fit, and I don't have enough light right now. But you can actually also try to put uh, uh, specimens directly on the stage uh, with light coming um, coming from uh, from the top, and then um, also do a focus stacking this way. Yeah. So I highly recommend that. Um, I, it is possible, therefore, to to also use the compound, uh, yeah, uh, a microscope, yeah. Uh, so um, okay, uh, there is now actually a, a, a comment here, which yeah. So uh, there was a question again um, about where the safe batch is. So I will go back to this uh, view over here to show you. There is uh, we are over here in file. A uh, batch save. Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, a batch. It, it, it's grayed out now because uh, I already saved it. Okay, but there is a batch save. But if you want, you can save all of the images individually as well. Just make sure that you're numbering it, um, yeah, correctly. Yeah, so um, you cannot just jump around. It has to be as you are focusing down. It has to be correctly numbered. Yeah? So and if you if you do that, then then essentially then. Uh, yeah, you're able to qu very quickly uh, use uh, Helicon Focus uh, to import it, and then you're able to yeah, um, yeah generate yeah, different yeah yeah different Im images using the different methods. Now I, I know that this one is probably not the most interesting <laughs> specimen here, but I just wanted to show it to you. And and uh, the, one of the reasons why again why the image quality is so bad is 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 because of the um, of the glass that's over the butterfly, and you can also see that there are reflections um, 
in yeah in here from from the lamp from the ring lamp yeah but the i know the quality isn't the very best but i just wanted to kind of show, give you a demonstration on how how you can use those programs yeah so again uh, for those of you just joined you take uh, the pictures first you save them um, and then you import them into helicon focus uh, um, for uh, for uh, basically uh, for if focus stacking okay so that is a little bit the thing so you know what i'm going to do is is um, i'm going to uh, yeah yeah zoom out again a little bit we're going to have a, maybe a, a just a, a, a quick look at some some other um um uh, some some other um uh, butterflies here and the good thing here is is that i'm able to um actually do a manual you know adjustment here and uh, let's have a look um, at one over here another butterfly this one is the larger one here yeah ah yeah you see again the the the, the led ring lamp <laughs> here as well yeah it's, it's pretty pretty large the thing here so let's zoom in a little bit it would be kind of interesting to see the compound eyes but now i have a problem placing the yeah so so here we go uh, i see the reflections are not so yeah so yeah. so we need to go up with the exposure time again and yeah, that, that would be another one of those examples yeah, you know what? Why not? Just, just uh, it's not properly centered, but I'm just going to leave it at that, and I'm going to just take pictures here. Um, I'm going to close this. I think it was how to close this. Uh, close uh, Control W. Yeah, I'm going to close all of those, and you know what? Just for uh, to give you another a second demonstration, how the, let's see how this works here. I'm going to um, yeah snap. Focus down, snap. Focus down, snap. I'm just going to try it again. Focus down, snap. What I've done in the past as well is uh, down, snap. Focus down, snap. Focus down, snap. Focus down, snap. Focused on. By the way, if you are interested in trying this program, um, it can be downloaded for free as well. Okay, so um, you, if you want to try out the functions, and that program then is actually free. Yeah. So let's uh, try it like this. Uh, so what, what what else do we have here? We have a process, and look here, we also have image stacking. How is that? Okay. So this uh, program also has image stacking built in. Okay. Um, I think as, as far as I remember, it didn't work quite as well. And no, I cannot open it. Let me save it again. File, uh, batch, save, uh, to view sequence. Um, yeah, I'm just going to overwrite the others. Okay. And uh, process image stacking. I have to find it now. Where did I, uh, where do I have it? Um, uh, programming, trans, uh, recordings. No, no, no. It was capture to view. Okay. Oh, not, no video files. Uh, all files. Ah, I see. Hmm. Okay. Um, it wants me to do a video. You know what? Maybe that's actually uh, much better. Um, we are going to try the following now. Uh, I'm going to not do a, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do an individual um, picture, but I'm going to do a video. Ah, yeah, now I remember. I've done this uh, some time ago. I go record. And I click next. Um, I will browse. I will just uh, save it again on this PC data capture. Okay. And uh, I'm going to click finish and it's now recording. So I stop recording and uh, I hope that this works now. Image stacking. Um, I need to go again into the, uh, the file. And now it should import the, Im the, the video. And uh, then um, it should actually make a stack. 
uh, based on the video. So this is actually a shorter way of doing that. I, I'm not uh, um, taking individual pictures, but uh, it will now ex extract the individual frames from from the um, from the video that I made. So it's much faster this way, of course. I only have also one file. Yeah. And uh, let's uh, see if this actually works. And then um, if this works, then I'm very happy. <laughs> and then I'm able to uh, yeah, go on to the next. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay. Hmm. Is this the, the result? You see, no, I'm not quite happy with the result here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, maybe what I've maybe I've done this a little bit too fast. This could be that I've uh, kind of uh, gone, yeah. Uh, but there is, yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't work. I'm not going to try to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, uh, yeah, with the video here, it it uh, it didn't uh, quite uh, quite work. Maybe I've uh, made the video a little bit too quickly. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to show you how this works. And if you want to try it out yourself, then uh, then yeah, you can of course do that as well. Um, I don't know if Helicon Focus actually um, um, allows me to to import videos. This would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it could be open video. Let's try that. Let's see if the the video works better. Data capture. Oh, this takes ages. Oh, no. Okay. Ah, it's a look at generated TIFFs 116. Okay. Let's click render. Okay, it's working. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Helicon Focus worked. Okay. So uh, that's that's quite nice. Okay, saving. Yeah. So that's how how the picture looks like. Yeah. So this is now stacked, made uh, from a video. So instead of uh, instead of simply taking individual pictures, you just uh, just focus all the way through and then uh, import that one file, and then it will extract uh, the images and it will then uh, stack everything. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you, okay? And what I will do now is is um, I'm going to now um, switch over to where is this? To this one over here, okay? And now I'm going to um, answer uh, a couple of questions, okay? So uh, let me go, uh, and then I'd like to move on to the next topic. So first of all, yes, of course, a hello from all over the world. Um, hi from England. Uh, we had a microscope party yesterday. We got 10 various things from the woods and examined them all afternoon with drinks and snacks. Yes, microscope parties. I remember back in the day, long time ago, I was still active uh, in astronomy, amateur astronomy, uh, looking at stars and planets and star parties uh, were quite common uh, or still are quite common. Uh, so that kind of reminds me a little bit here. Microscope parties also nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, I'll go down. Yeah, so audio and video is good. Uh, what camera are you currently using on the stereo microscope? The camera that I'm using is a five megapixel um, USB camera. Um, and I did make a review of this. I mean, it has a complex long name. I mean, the name of the camera, it's a, from Toop, uh, the, the chip is uh, from Toop Tech. Um, and the, the name of the camera can actually be seen if I switch over look over to tube view um, here in, in on the top corner lcm0 s05100 kpa here in the corner that's the the name the the model of the camera right um, it's a five megapixel camera anything more than five megapixels in my view is um, is wasted uh, because uh, the microscope um, is not able to produce a higher resolution okay so this is uh something that i just want to mention yeah? so more megapixels are not always better yeah um, do you measure the the scroll down in regular intervals or just focus uh, half a turn um what i've done now is, is just estimate it okay so this is uh certainly it was just for demonstration purposes um, of course, it would be probably better uh, to uh, do this in, in proper increments, but then again, this depends very much on 
um, on um, how much uh, of the depth of how much the depth of field is. It doesn't yeah. So and on the magnification. So if you have a higher magnification, then the depth of field is of course is smaller, and then you have to turn it smaller, right? So in that sense, maybe turning the focus continuously slowly um, while making a video might actually be probably the more re reproducible way. Yeah. Yeah. So a few minutes ago, you said you pressed the batch save. Yes, I explained this already. Yeah. So you recently showed us a slide wheel, but I cannot find one to purchase anywhere. Any idea where I can get one from um, a slide wheel? Oh, I see. Not the slide wheel. I probably, as I think you're referring to the so called slide ringing table. A slide ringing table. If this is the thing that spins uh, the slide, um, yeah, you can make one yourself. Um, and um, what you can do is, is you can buy yourself a, a correct, a, a, a real one from Brunel Microscopes uh, in the UK. They they manufacture it, Brunel Microscopes. Um, or you can go to Amazon and you can buy a spinning uh, yeah, disc or table, uh, which is used for making pottery. Yeah, for, for clay pottery. So this is also possible. It's probably a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so this, this is basically, I think you were referring to the slide ring table. I don't mind, but I think there is something wrong with the software or camera since I cannot see the drop down menu at all. Okay. Oh, now I get it. Uh huh. Interesting. Thank you for this comment. Um, there is, there's the comment that there is, you cannot see the drop down menu. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there might be some, some issue here. Okay, yeah. Um, my Helicon Focus was 30 days trial. Do you have the full version? Um, no, I don't have the full version. Um, I basically um, have been using a lot Picole, which is the free one, the free version. And the reason I've been using the free version is Picole is because <laughs> I, I know how to use it and it's free um, and uh, it also worked fine. However, it is not quite as user friendly and I downloaded the Helicon Focus uh, now for the purpose of uh, of uh, this live stream, because most people um, probably don't want to take the time to read um, all of the documentation of Picole. Yeah? So this is a. So I think uh, I, I think this was pretty much everything. Okay. Um, so is this why some microscopes have a head screw you can untighten so gravity lets it come down slowly to take stacking pictures? Okay, I get it. That's an interesting one. Uh, the thing is the following: in, in many microscopes, you can adjust the tightening, uh, the, the, the tightening of, of the focus by um, adjusting uh, the, the focus knobs. And if you make it too loose, then the stage is going to lower automatically on under gravity and this was basically a possibility i've never thought about that possibility <laughs> but uh, that's an interesting use um, uh, for that <laughs> in any case yeah so what i'm going to do now is is i'm going to um, i'm going to move on to the next topic okay so here is the desk view again yes here we go and the next topic is um is i would like to uh, put again a little bit of sand under the microscope but um, I want to show you something that is called fool's gold, um, which is iron pyrite, which is uh, basically, yeah, um, looks like gold, but it's not. And I'm going to show you how you can distinguish that. Uh, I need to show you now a video. Okay, so here is the video, how I collected it. This here is the beautiful city of Salzburg in Austria, which I visited uh, back uh, in August uh, for a day trip. And uh, the name of the river is uh, Salzach. Salzach, and it's uh, quite well known that the Salzach River contains a little bit of gold. Okay, there's some some ducks there, and I said, okay, um, I want to go find some gold <laughs> using my microscope, of course, uh, not expecting to find any. And no, I did not find any gold, but uh, I actually did find something that looked like gold. I said, wow, that's that's kind of cool. Is it gold? Is it not gold? And, yeah, and uh, I didn't know. Um, but then a little bit of research actually showed that this is not gold. It's called iron pyrite uh, or also known as fool's gold because some people confused it uh, with gold. And I just want to show this to you now and uh, um, how it behaves differently from, from, from real gold. Okay, so this is kind of the idea. So what I'll be doing now is on the desk view back here. Um, yeah, so here is, the, I always have to wait a minute or so until the, yeah, uh, the lamp starts to work. I'm going to um, simply take a small sample 
and um, I'm going to put a little bit of this sand here on the slide and for in order to do that I need to add a little drop of water yeah, it's a little too much the reason why I'm, I'm adding water is is uh, because it uh, it's easier this way to spread the the sand okay um, yeah how am I gonna get it out um, I've got uh, some a little yeah a stick here I'm just gonna use the stick yeah so and I'm going to just take a small sample of this here and uh, you see that uh, because of the water it kind of spreads quite nicely yeah. and uh, it's way too much water and for this reason I'm going to uh, take a tissue paper if I can reach it okay here we go to remove uh, yeah. pyrite is also known as poor man's gold somebody posted it yep. <laughs> yeah. in German you call it Katzengold cat's gold I don't know why they would actually yeah, call it like that um, yeah but it's of course not gold so and um, yeah I'm going to put this now again under the the, the microscope the nexius the okay again it takes always a, a little bit of time for the whole thing to respond and uh, yeah here here we go okay yeah. and you can already see some 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 like like this one over here some shiny yeah Sand grains like the like over here, so also looks a little bit like like gold, yeah. So if you look around it, there are quite a quite a few of them, yeah. Let's go a, a little bit uh, further out, yeah. I need to spread this apart maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah, like 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 uh, the one that you see here. Yeah, this one here um, on top. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks a little bit like like gold, right? This one over here. Ah, okay. Yeah. And uh, but um, I've done a little bit. I was when I first saw this, I was so happy. Wow, there is really gold in there. That then, but then I got a little bit suspicious because I found so many of these that I kind of wondered really that much gold um, in, in the sand and of course I did a little bit of research and found out that no it's not gold and the reason is is because it doesn't have the shape of gold gold is is not as flat but it's, it's much more round and if you press against it then actually gold will because it's a metal it will start to change its shape but actually it's also uh, pyrite uh, will actually fracture okay um, where do, uh, there's a question here where do you think the iron pirate had come from well uh, probably from the mountains uh, like the other sand grains right um, these are just natural occurring minerals and by erosion um, they're kind of washed into the river and uh, they're just a normal yeah that's just one form of minerals uh, among many that uh, can be found um, and the reason why it's uh, yeah kind of well known is it's because uh, it looks a little bit like gold and some people in the past have been fooled by it yeah and uh, so, so what we're going to do now is in that's now uh, uh, kind of the, the the difficult part a little bit is is i'm going to take my tweezers now and i have to kind of find it yeah and here we go uh, you see this yeah let me try it uh, and when you press against it then actually um, it will scatter and f and fragment and it will not deform yeah and uh, so, I mean, kind of picking it up is, is a little bit a difficult thing as well, okay? Because the, those particles are quite small, yeah? Yeah, yeah but um, I hope you get the idea a little bit, but, but by just look, by zooming in further, you're actually going to see that the edges are quite uh, sharp, right? And that is uh, big, and that's uh, not basically gold. Uh, gold is, is much more round uh, and, uh, yeah, and uh, those uh, these are fragments uh, which uh, kind of scatter when you press uh, press against them. Maybe I don't know if I'm able to find a slightly larger one. Yeah. But these iron, these pyrite uh, minerals are, yeah, quite uh, quite notable. It's a little bit difficult to see here. Also, ah, look at this here. Here, here is a big one, right? Okay. This one here. Ah, it's very difficult to do. Um, you know what? I'm going to disappear a little bit. I'm going to uh, try to do this under the microscope now. Just a second. Mm. 
Okay, I think I've lost it. Uh, he here it is again. I wonder if I'm able to pick it up with the. Uh, I wonder if I'm able to pick it up with uh, the. Nope. No, but ah. Okay. Did you just see that? How it, uh, how it uh, scattered and fractured? Okay. So that is uh, basically a, a quick test to uh, which demonstrates that actually you're not dealing with uh, with gold, which is very uh, soft and which is malleable. Okay. So which is able to change its uh, shape. Huh? Um, yeah, so this is a little bit something that I wanted to, to show you. Um, and uh, yeah, I've uh, however heard that, yeah, there is indeed gold in, in the river and some people are actually doing some gold washing there. You need a special permit to, to do that. Yeah, but uh, just looking at the amount of this, this would be way too much. Uh, yeah. And it's also less, uh, the pirate is of course also less dense. Look at this here. There's another huge one over here right in the center. Yeah. Um, gold is quite heavy and, and will sink downwards, well, but this one is uh, going to float more, right? So not gold, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, just, yeah, this was something I just wanted to share with you what I've been doing uh, over the holidays a little bit. I've been playing around and with those pyrite crystals and, and trying to, to crush them and then testing them and indeed all of them that I tried actually scattered and this was a sign that it's not gold. Right? So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to... Um, Again, um, yeah, going to uh, uh, go into some questions here. Okay, where do you think the iron powered? Yes, I already answered that. Oliver, I'm a retired and uh, micro microscopy is one of my hobbies. That's great. Okay, many thanks uh, for your programs. Your efforts uh, do not go unnoticed. Thank you very much uh, for the feedback. Um, you know, I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to pick up on that topic uh, why am I actually doing these live streams and, and microscopy videos I mean you might already know that I'm a biology teacher now for over 25 years I've been teaching middle and high school biology um, you know, to students love my job I really like it however biology in school can be sometimes a little bit dry we have uh, yeah, quite a full syllabi to co cover uh, many things are, are very theoretical I have to write things on the chalkboard because students, after all, have to pass examinations, standardized examinations even. And uh, in this, uh, yeah, and every time, or not every time, but very often when I explain things on the chalkboard, I draw a cell, for example, and explain the structures of a cell. I always tell myself, ah, oh, actually, it's just a chalkboard right? <laughs> um, cells don't look like that. Right? And then I, of course, I pull out a microscope and uh, some pictures and images and I try to and I show them how it really looks like. Um, but what I just want to say as a teacher is that I feel that sometimes indeed in, in an educational setting, like in a school, um, because we have a syllabus to cover and because we've got material to cover and there are exams coming up, sometimes a little bit the, the, the fun and the fascination of, of, of just observing nature and exploring nature sometimes becomes a little bit lost. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I became a biology teacher as well is because I like nature. I love biology. I love, uh, I'm fascinated by science, right? And sometimes in, in an educational setting, this can become a little bit lost. And I think that uh, and that's why I also decided uh, I'm going to pick up um, a little bit uh, microscopy as a hobby first. And then I said, okay, I want to share my fascination with other people because it, that's a different uh, perspective a little bit of, of, of the world and of biology. Yeah. Um, what do you think? How long will a glue in, um, uh, uh, slide last? Uh, what will happen with the glue in two, five or 10 years? Good question. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I personally don't have that experience. Um, the only thing is I know that PVA um, is a, which is a, a water-based mounting medium, which is also found in glue, has been used extensively as a mounting medium. So it is already an established mounting medium. Um, the only thing is, is that I've not used the, the, the commercial formulation, but I simply used a, a glue. When I say commercial, I mean the, a standardized one that is used for laboratory grade one, rather, right? So I don't know how long the, the, the glue actually lasts, but I think that's my personal view is, uh, and, uh, and some of the slides have lasted now, uh, I don't know, several months. Um, if it lasts for several months, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't last longer. I think what is rather more important is, is that the slide, um, or the specimen rather, is uh, 
properly uh, processed before you put it into the glue. So this means uh, um, there is the danger, of course, always that bacteria start to decompose uh, the, the specimen. But if the glue is able to reach all of the parts, then it, the glue might actually also preserve it. So I, I would say it's it's not only a factor about the glue itself or the mounting medium, but also how well the specimen has been preserved. Yeah? So um, small crystals of pyrite were used to, as diode detectors. Yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> when I was a, a youngster, I also made uh, di diode detector radials. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, would pirate look better with uh, polarized light? Um, I think, and uh, that would be, um, it's my suspicion, I, I think you might not be able to see it because it's too dark, okay? But you know what, I'm going to try it out and I'm going to switch over now to the microscope, okay? To the compound microscope and uh, we're going to look at the sand sample now, yeah, with light coming from the bottom and I probably, it's polarized, I've got, yeah, and I'm almost sure that you're not able to see a lot. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so, ah, yeah. And you see, it, it looks pretty ugly. Um, the reason is also because there was water there. Yeah. And the sand grains are simply too dark. Okay. And the uh, bright field is this here. Polarized light is this here. And you know what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to add a little bit of water, just a second, um, to show you the effect of water. No cover glass now, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, with water. It looks a little bit, airy. it brightens it up. And the reason why uh, the sand grains now look brighter is because their difference in refractive index between the sand grains and the surrounding water is lower. There's less of a difference in refractive index and therefore the light is uh, yeah, able to go through the, the, uh, the crystal um, the sand grains better. And, but of course here, you, um, because light is coming from the bottom, I'm not able to see the reflective um, yeah, nature of the pyrite, and therefore it looks everything looks dark. Yeah. So you see, uh, yeah, top illumination would be better in this case. Yeah. So, um, do you own a collection of antique slides? No, um, I don't have antique slides. I've been thinking about uh, getting some of those, but some of them are not really cheap. Uh, they're collectors' items, and uh, for this reason, not always uh, very cheap. Yeah. Uh, can you explain in simple words what is refractive index? Okay, I'm going to explain it to you in a totally non tech okay. If you in a totally non-technical term, okay. Um, you, let's say that you have a glass of water. Okay, it's a perfect uh, the, the glass is has no color on it, just a totally clear glass. You fill it with water and you put it on your table. The, cla the glass and the water is transparent and the air around it is transparent. Why are you then still able to see the glass? That's the question, right? If the glass is, why are you able to see raindrops on, on the table? If I put, I don't know, I'll show you. Okay, that's actually a good point. Um, refractive index is a central uh, topic in, in, yeah, is a central topic in, 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 in yeah, in physics. You know what, I'm just gonna do the following. Okay, look. That's what I've done right now. You see this here? The question that I have right now is, is why, are you able, why are you able to see the water even though it's actually transparent? Yeah, that's the question. The reason is, is you're able to see um, also the glass of water or you're able to see this glass here. It's transparent. Yeah, the water in here is also transparent. So why, why is it not invisible? And the reason is, is because the light rays that go through the glass are bent, are refracted. And uh, this is because of the refractive index. In other words, when light goes through glass, then it's slowed down, okay? And uh, it's, so it has less than the speed of light in vacuum. And this actually causes the light rays to bend. And, and the reason why we're able to see this is, is because it bends and reflects the light rays, yeah? Um, and not because it has a color on its own, right? And uh, the way how um, a material interacts with the light rays, that is referred to as the refractive index. So that's uh, a, how do you say, a very non-mathematical term, um, but in reality, refractive index has to do something with uh, how much um, a certain material is able to speed, uh, slow down the speed of light, and, and this causes the light rays to be bent. Huh? So, um, so I have a microscope worth 125 US dollars. Is it suitable for my research field? 
Is this a, if this is a question, uh, honestly, it depends what you want to do. I mean, there's uh, microscopes that cost thousands of, of euros or dollars and are still not suitable because they do not have the correct features. So it depends entirely what you want to do. Yeah? Um, so it is not really a question of cost, but it is a question of what you want to do. And uh, price really, yeah, if you want to, is not, not the determining factor, but rather the features that the microscope has. And if you just want to observe micro, uh, the nature and the environment, um, theoretically, yeah, even very low cost microscopes are able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, what I will be do doing now is uh, the following. Um, I will now go on a little bit. Um, yeah, unless uh, there are more questions. I, I would like to go on a little bit now to, uh, to, to, to the next one. Look at this here. Um, it is a work in progress. Okay, um, I want to tell you a little bit of what my intentions are and why it did not yet work well, but still I'm able to show you something today. What you've got here is corn, popcorn. Okay, and uh, what I've done is I've put some of the, these popcorn, non-salted and yeah, just regular corn um, on wet tissue paper. Um, I basically covered it with another layer of tissue paper, put a lid on top so that it doesn't evaporate. And after a couple of days, uh, after about two or three days, we could, I could already see the first roots. And then, yeah, this is basically now approximately a week old. You see that the little plants are already yeah, quite not nice and large. And um, I've done that because um, I want to actually observe the cell division, cell divisions um, under the microscope uh, of the root tips because the root tips are growing very quickly. So there are a lot of cell divisions and I wanted to observe the chromosomes and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> and the reason, I know why it didn't work. The reason is because it did not have the right stain um, uh, and uh, I have to make the stain. So it's carmine, uh, carmine acetate, it's called. It's very strong uh, uh, acetic acid that you need and uh, carmine. So I'm in the process of preparing that, but I still want to show you um, how you're able to make cells visible by using not a microtome like I showed you in the past, but actually by crushing the cells. Okay, and then we're going to stain them in any case with uh, with methylene blue. Okay, so it's, it's a pretty simple thing. Um, and you might be wondering why am I doing these things here? Um, because as I told you, I'm a teacher and um, we are also of course using uh, similar experiments in school. And these are very straightforward things that, uh, that even kids can do. And then they see their own plants growing and then they're happy and then they can also observe something under the microscope, okay? So, but the first thing before I look at the root tips is I just wanna have a look and I did not try that yet. I just wanna take one of those leaves here and put them under the microscope, okay? So um, I'll do that and I do not have very high expectations because those leaves here are pretty thick. Okay, the multiple cell layers thick. And for this reason, usually um, you're not able to see a lot. And because I'll be throwing this away anyway after some time. Um, and it doesn't really matter because the plant, a new leaf is coming in from, from here. Yeah, um, I can easily cut off this leaf over here, at least a part. And the plant will continue to grow, yeah, because a new leaf is is the so-called the apical Mary stem. That's the part is 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 down there. So and uh, yeah, we I put it on here, and uh, I need to now add again a little bit of water. Um, I need to change the pipette tips. Where did I put them? Here they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a pipette like this uh, for for the water. Um, cover glass, of course, goes on top. Yeah. Ah, I got way too many. And because I'm never really happy with the those cover glasses because they're always a little bit dirty, just need to yeah wipe it with uh, some some dry wipe it with some tissue paper. Um, we put a drop of water on here as a. I've already showed you that the water is important also uh, to make objects a little bit more transparent. Uh, you see that yeah, the water doesn't want to stay on here. And up, a little bit more. It's way too thick, okay? I just wanted to make this clear that this is not, uh, yeah. But maybe we're still able to see something and I don't know, um, so I've not tried this yet, okay? But I'm just gonna try this. And uh, I'm going to switch over to BX, the, the microscope view. And uh, as expected, yeah, 
very thick. Let's go up a little bit with the, yeah. And uh, we focus a little bit, but we are able to see a couple of cells here as well already. Yeah. Yep. Actually, it, were, it works better than I expected because we are able to see the individual cells, usually here on the side where everything was cut open. Okay, this is uh, a little bit brighter here. And the reason is, is because when the cells are cut open, the contents, they start to spill out. And this is usually also the place where we're able to see maybe some of the chloroplasts. So let's go up to 600 times. So, so here we go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is, a, oh, it was a interesting, something moving around a little bit. Yeah, and occasionally what we're able to see, depends a little bit on the plant, is, is that uh, if you're very patient, because the cells continue to do photosynthesis, occasionally we start to see some air bubbles forming as well at the place where we cut the leaf. Yeah? So this is also something that you might want to try. I don't know if this is one of the ear bubbles already, um, but uh, um, because there are those horizontal, those long structures that you see here, okay, um, these are the vascular uh, bundles or vascular tissue. These are basically where water is transported, and uh, this uh, is uh, might also be the place where then the gases can move out. And could this be a a stoma, stomata? This could be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, stomates are openings in, in, on the surface of the cell. Yes, of course they are. Ha, ah, beautiful. Okay, here we go. Um, so I unfortunately I don't have the arrow right now, but uh, pretty much in the center of the cell you see those. Uh, yeah, cells with this uh, long horizontal yeah yeah thing pretty much in the center right now. These are openings on the on the bottom side of the leaf, uh, which allow gases to like oh yeah carbon dioxide and air to go in and oxygen to go out. Yeah, so these are the stomates. Okay, yeah. Just wanted to show this to you because it's it's quite easy. The preparation is quite easy. Normally, uh, leaves are way too thick here. Another one. Yeah, uh, leaves are way too thick and too dark. But uh, because it's a very young plant. Um, this is, is more easily visible. Yeah. yeah, here again, stomates. Okay. Yeah, so this was basically, but I wanted to show you the roots actually here. Here another one. Okay. Um, so the, yeah, so um, I will now um, try to prepare, uh, I will now try to prepare uh, some, some roots um, and to show you how to make a, um, yeah, it, um, to get the cells thin by crushing them. Um, so this is basically with the leaf, it's a whole mound and just you take the whole object as it is and you put it under the microscope and then um, yeah, you have to be a little bit lucky to see something because sometimes it's too thick. Um, and the root, uh, yeah, I'm also going to do that now. Um, I'm also going to first take the whole root and put it under the microscope because um, if we're lucky, we're also able to see the root here, which also look quite nice. I need to find my glasses now because um, yeah, and I'm going to now um, cut off uh, some of the roots here and uh, also put them under the microscope. Okay. So I'm just reading again the questions here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know if you're able to see, you know what, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go again to the, <laughs> this view over here. Let's see if we're able to. Okay. See, that's now basically under the stereo microscope. It's, it's too large. Yeah, again, here these are yeah, the popcorn. Yeah, and you see that they're, the roots uh, yeah, have already grown quite a bit. Um, why exactly popcorn? Well, of course, because they grow fast and uh, popcorn is a so-called a monocot plant. Um, and uh, this has the advantages that there is not one main root, but there are many roots. And uh, this basically means there are many uh, samples from one popcorn. You have you can collect many samples. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit the thing. Um, monocots um, uh, are basically are those plants 
that have one first leaf. So they have those uh, like grass, for example, uh, corn, yeah, wheat. And they have this one lengthy, long, uh, long uh, leaf. And uh, in contrast to uh, dicots, like the last time I prepared some some maple leaves, they have uh, basically a network which uh, the, where the leaf vessels are going crisscross in like in a network. And here um, they are basically all parallel, right? And those monocots have uh, basically a lot of roots here, right? Um, scattering out. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to just take a root, any root, um, yeah, and, and, and try to, uh, I'm going to take maybe this, this one over here. I see that this one, I see it kind of grows into the tissue paper. Just going to cut off the tip here. Um, I have to find it, here it is. And I put it here now on the microscope slide. Okay, here it is. Okay, you know what? Why not? Why not try another one as well? Again, I'm a little bit uh, difficult already in seeing. Yeah, see, this has already grown quite a bit into the tissue paper. Yeah. Wow! Look! Look! This is pretty long. <laughs> wow! Okay. So here's another one. Um, yeah, so these are ho hopefully the tips and um, I'm just gonna put them under the microscope as it is, okay? Just to, to show you um, that uh, we have a little bit of a comparison because it's the whole point, uh, because uh, if we're able to see the cells already then why even prepare them? But I just want to show you that they are probably way too thick to see anything. So here we go, it's a little bit too bright. Okay, so that's how it looks like. So this is uh, the root tip. Okay, uh, we go up with the magnification here. Yeah, and as expected, uh, relatively dark. Okay, um, yeah, so we can try to add again a little bit of water to see if this makes a difference. Yeah. yeah you see, not, not a lot, yeah. So, and for this reason, we need to prepare the root tip a little bit uh, to make uh, the cells uh, better visible. I'm going to go down again with the magnification. Uh, you can already see, ah, yeah. Here, uh, either these are some tissue paper fibers or it could be the side roots. Uh, these, are the, these are possibly side roots here already forming. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. This is also something that yeah, we're able to um, occasionally observe. Yeah, we already have see we already see some side roots. Okay, so um, so let's prepare them. Okay, let's do a little bit of, of, of staining. Yeah, and we have to now somehow get the root into a relatively thin form, and I'm going to show you now how to do that. Um, yes, there is the possibility to break the cells apart by boiling it in, um, yeah, in very strong um, acetic acid. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I will always want, maybe in a later live stream, I just want to kind of, uh, yeah, show you now what I'm going to do. Is this, uh, I'm taking here, oh, you cannot see it because <laughs> the desk, where is here? Here we go, okay. so. If I were to add a stain right now, um, then it would take a, quite a long time for the stain to actually diffuse and to go into the um, in, into the uh, into the root. So what I'm going to do is the following: is I'm going to take a second slide, okay, a second slide. I'm going to place it over here and I'm going to carefully crush them like this, okay. So. By doing that, I'm breaking apart this, uh, uh, not the cells themselves, but I'm separating the cells. And this makes it easier for the stain to actually reach uh, the different parts um, of, of the root. Okay, so we can, yeah, try to do this again. A little bit more maybe. Okay, 
no horizontal here now it's on the other side here no horizontal shifting but a, a vertical and um, I, what I've done the following is is I um, tried this already today in the afternoon and I discovered that the stain the methylene blue is a little bit too strong so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take uh, two parts of water okay I'm just I can just mix it here two parts of water um, with one part um, of the methylene blue solution so I'm going to take up one part here I'm mixing it and it goes on top the rest I can remove I don't want to have any stains on my clothing okay and now I have to wait a little bit um, what you might also want to try is 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 uh, to still separate it yet a little bit more and uh, what I do next is, is a cover glass goes on top so So now this is uh, where things become a little bit more difficult because what I have to do is now I have to press down but the problem is, is that the surface is too soft and this might actually crack uh, the slide. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to quickly move away to the tape from the table here. You cannot see that and I'm going to just press now up directly on here because uh, if you try to press here on the soft surface it's going to crack the slide. And uh, let's now have a look under the microscope, okay? So, um, I need to go to this one over here again and this is called a squash specimen. And uh, let's try to find the tip somewhere. Is it, where's the tip? Here is the tip. Ah, yeah, you see that uh, some of the cells here on the tip have not yet been stained, um, but um, the stain yeah, is uh, stronger on the side where the concentration is higher. And where I'm also able to see already some, some of the xylem, which I'm also going to explain. So this one is now we're going up with the magnification here. Okay. And uh, you see those uh, cells here in front, this is the place the, which the stain did not reach yet. Okay, and here we are now able to see this, the individual cells much better. Some bubbles, and uh, occasionally you're also sometimes able to see that the methylene blue starts to stain the nuclei better. I'm just going to look around here, but not so much here. Okay, but let's have a look at this um, at this part here. A little bit if we go up with the magnification okay yeah, not so not such a nice example ah yeah here we are also able in the center we able to see the nuclei yeah. and uh, what I'm going to do in and I'm working on that is is uh, I would like to use carmino acetate and then you're able to stay in the chromosomes and you're able to see chromosome divisions um, as well. Okay. Um, thinking about it, uh, yeah, it does look a little bit, uh, yeah, not quite as concentrated. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but here we are able to see now the individual cells are much better. And uh, I'm going to explain you now. Look, uh, here we're further down the uh, uh, the root and you see that the cells here are quite long. And here at the towards the tip, the cells become much smaller, more box-like, yeah? And yeah, exactly here, for example, you see a lot of the cells here which are much uh, smaller. Um, this is at the tip, the cells are dividing. Okay, um, and therefore they are much smaller and the further back they are then they start to elongate and become longer. 
okay? But they don't divide as much anymore, right? So here, this is the dividing part where there are many dividing cells, which are much smaller. But then as the tip grows and as the plant grows, the further back, the cells start to become longer. Yeah, so uh, behind here, the, the cells start to grow in size. Yeah, so you can see they're quite long here. And here at the tip, which is the actively growing part, the cells are, there are more cells, uh, but they're, they're smaller because uh, of the rapid division. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's also something that I uh, sometimes uh, uh, explain a little bit. And, if, uh, the, and with the use of the correct staining, the correct uh, procedure, we're actually then occasionally also able to see chromosomes, but the, the methylene blue does not uh, stain them properly. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just wanted to uh, show that to you. Now let's have a look at the other, let's have a look at the other root here. That's the other one here. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, and those long structures, that seems to be the, also some vascular tissue where substances like water and so on are transported. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, just to, to illustrate a little bit that there are different preparation techniques. Ah, very nice. Those little lines that you see, these are the side roots. Very nice. Okay, all of the side roots uh, which started to, to grow. Yeah. So little, uh, you can actually see them. Ah, also here, look, 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 look. Here, this is where the nuclei of the cells are also stained. Let's go, turn up the brightness a little bit. You can see those circles. Really? Nuclei? I don't know. Should be one nucleus in this per cell. Yeah, I wonder if these are not some other structures. Yeah, yeah but here the side roots are, are quite nicely visible as they grow out Yeah, from, from the root. Yeah. So, okay, uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to go back uh, to um, a couple of questions that uh, you might have. Okay, um, let's switch back to this one over here. So, Refractive index. Uh, yeah, you want uh, this is a que again the question for the 125 US dollars for cancer research. Um, I'll be honest with you. If you get a, uh, it, depends again here. It depends if you want to uh, uh, look at uh, prepared uh, tissues and look at the stained cells, uh, whether the tissue contain um, is is a tumor or not. You can do that with very cheap microscopes as well. Yeah, so you get yourself a biopsy if it's properly stained. Um, and there are indeed uh, medical slides out there that are uh, of different types of tumors. And uh, you can even observe them and look at them with very cheap microscopes. So, uh, sure. Um, but it depends again here um, what you want to look at specifically. If you want to do some, some more advanced uh, cancer research with maybe some staining techniques and so on, um, or fluorescent staining, then of course uh, this might not be enough. Yeah? Again, it depends quite a lot what you want to do. How did you grow these plants? Okay, uh, honestly, this was very easy. Um, these plants here. Ah, look, they're, they're, they're black. <laughs> Why are they black? Because of the green screen. The plants are green. And, uh, yeah. Um, all you do is, is you take uh, some tissue paper, what I've done here. Okay, you take some tissue paper, um, you add a little bit of water, so you make sure that there's no standing water, and you put uh, some popcorn in here. Um, not, not the prepared popcorn, where, which is already salted and, and, and so on. You just put some popcorn in here and you put another wet tissue paper on top and you wait for two or three days. And that's it. You know, or, yeah. uh, uh, you put the lid on, over it, uh, so you put the lid over it so it doesn't evaporate. And you just make sure that it's always uh, kept moist. No standing water, it's really bad. Um, but uh, yeah, Th that's it. Um, yeah, and uh, then it's uh, yeah, after about uh, two days, uh, I could or one or two days, the roots were already out. Yeah, um, are you using a two times Barlow ring at the moment? Uh, do they come from standard if you buy a stereo microscope, or is this brand depending? Okay, I'm using a 0 0.7 Barlow right now, uh, to lower the magnification because um, I wanted to have a lower magnification because the camera already magnified so much. So it did not come with a microscope, uh, but um, you can buy the extra. 
and uh, um, I tried it with a 0.5 bar low, which was a little bit too much. Um, and uh, so I bought a 0.7 bar low to lower the magnification. And this also increases the distance between the objective and the specimen. And this was actually another reason why I got that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what cells are they in the background picture in the screen now? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what you see over here, these are the cells of Elodia, which is a water plant which has very thin leaves. And the things that you see moving around is a time-lapse video um, of the moving chloroplast. It's called cytoplasmic streaming. I also did, if you search my channel, then you're also going to find videos on that. So those uh, green dots that you see moving around, these are not cells, but these are chloroplasts inside the cells. And I made it not much faster. I don't know how much faster, 10 times, 20 times faster. Um, yeah, so this is a time-lapse video. Yeah, just uh, put it in the background. There's a little bit of, of a decoration here. Yeah? Uh, you mean the corn kernels, right? Yes, yes, uh, the, the popcorn, exactly. Yeah, um, e exactly. And and uh, you, if you just get those and and uh, um, the non-salted ones, um, yeah, and you just basically put them into some wet tissue paper. Um, the reason why you should not have standing water, um, it, as I mentioned, is, is because uh, when they start to germinate, when they start to grow, they need a lot of oxygen. Okay, uh, plants only produce oxygen once they have the green leaves. Okay, but uh, if the green leaves are not there yet, then the uh, the plants, the, the the germinating plants, actually need oxygen uh, because they they had they're doing a lot of cell respiration, and uh, for this reason, it's not good to actually have them completely soaked in water. Yeah, but then otherwise there's going to be too little oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, so this is basically, um, what time is it? Oh yeah, it's one hour, 15 minutes. I'm, I'm quite uh, well on time. Um, as, a, as a quick summary, um, what I've uh, talked about today is uh, first I put a few uh, of these butterflies under the microscope and I showed you how to do a little bit of image stacking. Um, yeah, focus stacking that is. Um, yeah, the quality of the image was not so good. I think because of the, also the glass. Um, on top here, which caused some reflections here. Then um, I just wanted to show you some pyrite uh, under the microscope by, I don't know where, is it the sand sample I put it? Yeah, by showing you, ah, oh, yeah. I don't know where, is, where I put the slide. Uh, here it is, yeah. Um, some pyrite, which uh, is basically looks like a little bit like, like, like gold, but actually it's not gold. And I just wanted to, the reason why I wanted to show it to you is because I was experimenting around with this a little bit uh, some time ago. And uh, last note, but not least, I, I showed you um, some, yeah, some of these plants here under the microscope and how you can essentially crush them um, and uh, to get them thin enough um, to actually uh, make the cells visible. Okay, so that that's pretty much um, it. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, if you have any specific wishes or requests that I would like you want me to put under the microscope, please also tell me. Okay. Um, yeah, so there are some remaining questions here. From which country are you, sir? Well, I'm from Austria in Europe, yeah, right now. Um, so it's already quite late at night. It's almost 11 o'clock in the at night uh, at where I am, okay? And uh, yeah, I hope that you liked the live stream again. Um, yeah, do check out my other videos of this channel and also the shorts, the YouTube short, uh, short the YouTube shorts as well, uh, which uh, I've uh, also started to make. Um, and uh, I do also have a second channel called Microhunter Microscopy. There's also a link uh, somewhere uh, where I talk more about uh, do microscope reviews and uh, talk a little bit more about the technical aspects and where I also answer some um, some of the questions that you might have. Okay, so. Um, don't don't meet under the microscope <laughs> last request you know what uh i can do that um but if you're interested i just a few days ago i published a video i put a moose an elk which is this, uh, this huge animal um, I have some meat from that animal under the microscope as well yeah and uh so do check out that video okay uh so meat under the microscope does look very interesting Really, uh, so um, I did make a video and I, I think the Döner meat actually looks uh, similar um, as well. I'm going to call it quits uh, for the day, okay? Uh, yeah, some. I'm just reading that for some people it's 3 a.m. in your country, heaven's sake. Well, I have to say thank you for, for staying up that late just for watching the live stream. I think yeah, I feel very honored for that, okay? And uh, yeah, I would like to, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, say bye bye now. I hope that I didn't forget any uh, questions to answer. Otherwise, um, yeah, maybe I'm going to answer them next time. And I wish you all the best and happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, see you around next time. And bye bye.